Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to property investing, I think it goes without saying that we need some form of capital in order to purchase properties and in order to build up a portfolio. But don't worry, as in 2022, money is literally everywhere. We just need to know how to go out and how to get that money. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the seven side hustles that you can use and you can trial in order to build up your savings to purchase that first or that next buy to let property investment. Now the first side hustle that I wanted to share with you is YouTube ad revenue. By sitting here today watching this video, the likelihood is that you'll have been served an ad when you clicked on my face or my thumbnail. There would have been an advert that popped up with a company or an individual advertising something before you got onto this video. Now that company or that individual will have paid some money in order to get that advert in front of this video and that revenue will be taken and split between YouTube and split between myself as a YouTube creator and paid as something called YouTube ad revenue. So YouTube ad revenue is a fantastic way to earn money on the side and for many people it develops into a full-time job. In fact, for myself, it's what started everything that you see today. Property X, me being able to invest in more properties and me being able to work for myself full time. Now, months vary massively. And if you can imagine that my views on YouTube vary between 20,000 views per month all the way up to you know 150 or 160 thousand views per month usually sitting somewhere in the middle at around the 50 60 thousand views per month mark when those views fluctuate of course the revenue fluctuates and we only get a small percentage of the ad revenue and therefore it can vary anywhere from a two or three hundred pound month all the way to earning a thousand pounds per month. So YouTube ad revenue could be a great side hustle for you to get started with. Of course, the positive is the income, the positive is the reach, getting yourself in front of people, and also the ad revenue that it pays you. The downsides to YouTube ad revenue being the fact that we have to think more long-term. This takes longer to get started, and we don't always upload that first video, get thousands of views, and get enough views in order to then start producing ad revenue. The second, side hustle that I want to talk to you about is a commission only sales rep. Now, for those of you that don't like sales, we'll immediately sort of turn this option down, but I beg you to continue listening to what I have to say about this role. Now, it doesn't always have to be commission only. It could be a salary and commission structure, but usually if you go for a commission only sales role, you're increasing the percentage of commission that you could earn on the product that you're going to sell. Now, when it comes to commission only sales, there tends to be three types of people. There are the natural salespeople. There are the people that have to really put time and effort and role play into learning how to sell, which is what I'd say I probably was. And then there's the people that just don't enjoy it, don't want to do it. And therefore this really isn't the side hustle for them. But if you are someone that believes you are either a natural salesperson, or if you believe that you have the ability to learn how to be a good salesperson, then this is a fantastic side hustle that you can do. Now, a fun fact for you is that whilst I was working in a sales role nine till five, I also had a separate commission only sales role on the side. And I was selling an accounting mentoring growth package in which I would sell either a 2,000 pounds or a 9,000 pound product. And based off of which one I sold, I would get a 20 or 25% commission on selling that product. As I said, I did that on the side of working that nine to five and my hunger came from the fact that I wanted to generate and build up enough money to buy that first buy to let. Now, as a strategy or as a side hustle, commission only sales, as I said, is one of the best because of the amount of money that you can earn from it. The downsides being the fact that there is a lot of either hard selling or cold selling, or it's really a numbers game. So you really have to have the heart, the hunger and the drive to go out and become a good salesperson. Side hustle number three has to be what I call flipping or reselling products. So this could be clothing, could be furniture, could be games, could be anything that you get your hands on that you can make a profit margin on. This is also something that I have trialed in the past in between owning a brand and uh, moving on to 
start investing in property. And as I say, I was trying to build up that initial deposit, that initial capital, which would allow me to purchase this property. So my drive and my hunger was there. Now, when it comes to flipping items that you find, the best places to find these can be car boot sales, can be going to secondhand shops, even charity shops, which you can find items which you can add a profit margin to and obviously sell off. The best way to do these is, of course, using apps such as eBay, although that's slightly old school, using Vinted, using things like Etsy and a whole host of other different platforms that you can buy and sell these products on. Now the advantages of this side hustle are clear for me and that is the fact that you don't have to create a business around this, you don't have to create a brand around this or have to do loads of administration. It's quite a simple model where you just buy you add a margin and then you sell for a profit. The downside, however, being the fact that you are gonna to have to deal with a high volume of products. The chance of you finding a product and selling to make a few hundred pounds profit or a few thousand pounds profit are slim. And therefore this could take more time, but also more effort. Now at this point in the video, I want to share with you a side hustle that's very close to my heart. In fact, I recently dropped a video about this and that is starting an e-com business or a product based business where you build a whole brand around it. Now you could actually go down the route of doing this as drop shipping, where you are effectively taking someone else's product and being hands off in the sale process of it. So you're using someone else's product, you're using a logistics company to help you ship it out so that you aren't part of the fulfillment of that product. In fact, what you are is the, the marketing, the advertising and the sales of that product. Now, drop shipping, I don't know a huge amount about. It's one of those side hustles that I've never fully gone into. But my understanding is that if you get the right product, then the, the reach and the revenues can be very high. However, the disadvantage is the fact that the profit margins can be very low and the advertising can be quite expensive to, to get you there. Now, I was more referring when it comes to e-com to an actual product or brand focused business. I've always favored adding a brand to something because I think you add your own level of IP, you add your own level of customization to something and that's what repeat customers will come back to purchase. Now, as I've already alluded to here, I recently created a video about a company that I created, I built up and I even went on to sell. I'll put a little link up in the corner of this video here so that you can go back and watch that video and learn how I started and sold a business. Now the clear benefits of this side hustle is the fact that it's incredibly rewarding. It's fun, you're building up a brand and if you do go on to see success then it can be something that rapidly grows and you can be come very successful off the back of it. However, the downsides being, again, the long term. You know, we're talking about side hustles here. We're talking about ways to generate money in order for you to build up capital, build up savings quickly. And therefore starting something that's incredibly time intensive and really is a, a long game play isn't always the best form of a side hustle. So side hustle number five has got to be cars. You wanna be a property investor. You want to probably eventually flip houses. Why not start? by flipping cars. It's effectively a very similar model, just on a much smaller scale. And in fact, you can learn some fantastic skills that you will carry through to property investing, property flipping in the future, such as the art of negotiation and working with people to find a, a mutually beneficial win-win, also being able to learn how to add value to something and then being able to learn how to market and sell that product. Now, the obvious advantage to flipping cars is the profit margins are bigger. We've already talked about doing flipping and reselling of products, of games, of clothes, where the amount of money you make per individual sale is quite small and therefore you have to do a large amount of volume. We're now talking about something where we can perhaps do less volume and make bigger profit margins. So clearly that is a benefit, but the downside being the fact that if we are doing this from ground zero, if we're doing this as the first side hustle we've ever done and we've not got much savings, you're gonna require a bit of capital to get you started. If you're gonna buy a secondhand car, you're gonna need some money to purchase it, you're gonna need some money to spend on it and add value to it, and then potentially even spend some money on it to advertise it and sell it. So this next side hustle is a new one. It's something that is increasing in popularity and that is video production. Now, I'm not talking about going out and starting an advertising agency or a marketing agency, nor am I talking about doing a 
big video production company where it's going to cost you thousands of pounds just to get the business set up. In fact, I mean learning the skills to edit and repurpose short form content on behalf of you know investors, companies, so that they can grow their reach and grow their audience. In recent months, we've seen the rise of certain individuals such as the Tate brothers come onto the scene and they've truly used this to their advantage to grow a huge audience at scale in a short amount of time. So there are plenty of entrepreneurs, companies, investors who will pay you for the same. I initially learned this myself back in 2018, 2019. I just sold the previous business. I was thinking about how can I bring eyeballs and attention to the property space from my point of view, because I'd heard Gary Vee talking about the power of media and the power of your audience that you can bring in through something that you're learning or some value that you can share. And in actual fact, the phrase money goes where attention flows has never been more true. Attention truly is the new currency of the world. So this is a fantastic opportunity for anyone that's slightly creative and wants to get hands on with their side hustle. Last but not least, of course, has to be sourcing. You thought I'd forget sourcing? No, sourcing is one of the best side hustles in my opinion, not only because you can build up the property investing skill set that you therefore will need to take forward into your investing, but also it allows you to earn good money whilst doing so. So you can build up that capital, build up that savings pot through sourcing, but also build up the skills that you will take on to your own buy to let. So of course there are infinite advantages here. We're going out on viewings, we're making connections with estate agents that could last for a long time. We are learning the full process of how to negotiate with owners, estate agents, and that full buying process. But also we are earning quite a good money, and quite a good commission from doing so in the meantime. Now sourcing is where a sourcer or a property finder goes out to find a property. Now they might find this either below market value or they might add value in some other way, like a director vendor property, or perhaps they've gone round, they've done the full viewing, they've done the full property analysis. Now they take this property and they deliver it on a plate to an investor, someone who is perhaps slightly time poor because they're busy with their job, with their family life, and they don't have the time to be doing endless viewings, endless offers, and trying to secure this property over here. So that's where the sourcer comes in. They deliver it on a plate to the investor. And for that exchange of value, of course, there is a fee involved. Now with that fee, the sourcer can then take that money, which is usually somewhere between two and 5,000 pounds, and they can then either store it and save that towards a buy to let, or they could take it, reinvest it into the sourcing business and try to invest and grow more income from their business. Now, the benefits, as I've said, are vastly outweighing the downsides here, but of course the downsides are the, the time required, the amount of mileage you have to do, the trips you have to do, the effort that you have to put in. But once you've done one or two of these, you'll see that it is definitely a repeatable model. It's definitely a scalable model. And in fact, sourcing is probably my favorite of all of the seven side hustles that I've shared with you today. So go out there, go make some money, and I'll see you in the next video.